So now we're getting into the um, to the money making side. So we've got three mowing crews here at Stepping Stone. We name them Law Maintenance One, Two, and Three. Uh, Law Maintenance One, LM One, they drive um, an F-150 with an open open trailer, 16 foot, I think. So they have they do more of the bigger properties. They've got a 52 inch, which is our biggest mower for us. And then they also have a 36 inch grandstand and then two push mowers. But uh, because they do a little bit bigger stuff, we we kind of gave them the bigger unit. However. They don't really need all the space and when we get we can consolidate when we get to the new place so when we get in here um we put this i like these shelves because they can interlock and we can make them into what we'll see when we get down to the special projects but again labeled we pretty much use these spots up here for where they can put some of their stuff like rain tarp which is over here shade tarp in the wrong spot there um their water coolers over there which we don't use for water anymore we just put ice in and water bottles because we mix fuel so we do all of our mixed fuel in the two and a half gallons and then all of our straight fuel aka just what you get from the gas station is uh in the five gallons it keeps it very simple the blue gas cans which are five gallons that is our roundup we'll mix it in these guys when we pre-mixed again trying to save time on properties for the guys and then they got their two blowers again we like those Husqvarna uh 580s it's a good we find it a good to be a good all season blower so talked about the mowers here this is how we hang things up. So again, we go back to those deck boards that we can mount, and then we have this stuff organized. So every unit we have has an extra weed eater. So they only carry three on, this crew only carries three on, the, three on their truck, but then they have a spare. Everything's labeled number wise, and then also um, LM1 is green. So we got green tape on there. So that tells you that, okay, this is um, LM1's weed eater, it's LM14 right green four if it needs to be some sort of repair needs to get done we can see how much money we're putting into it these weed eaters you know whatever 300 400 you don't want to put 200 into it every other month um at some time you got to retire it then they've got their basic hand tools not all of these go like we have three leaf rakes we don't need to bring three leaf rakes but we use that same equipment in the off season so mm. i think every day they'll bring a scoop shovel a hard rake a leaf rake a shovel and then a push broom because they have the bigger unit Unfortunately, again, with the storage facility, as you grow, you start to notice more problems. We don't have access to trash. We've gotten really good about separating out non-organic and organic material, so green waste versus just, you know, everything else. Mm -hmm. So because we have to take this to, to the dump, and, you know, we, so we load this up once every week, usually. Um, last week was the was kind of weird, but, we, you know, we probably took it out on Tuesday or Monday, mm -hmm. and this is what we're left with. It just adds up. Yeah. <laughs> so this can be get really full. This is it for this unit. Nice. Um, pretty straightforward. Here we go to LM2 and LM3. So again, color coordinated. Um, these are our ramp rack setups. So we keep them on the ramp rack during the week unless it's calling for heavy rain. Everything's locked. So we're big into, uh, I think most of our stuff's equipment defender because I like the combination locks. During the weekends, it's calling for rain, prying eyes. We gotta take this stuff off, unload, load, constant thing and put them in here. But blue is LM2, yellow is LM3. Pretty much identical setups. So everything you see is basically the same. We've got weed eaters, their hand tools they need. You got your bags, your mowers. Again, these 36 inch right standard bees. Little ladders, water coolers, whatever else. So very similar to LM1. But again, how we're utilizing the space, being able to get this stuff off the ground and keep it organized has been extremely helpful. Pretty much all the, the uh, hooks you see are from Home Depot or Lowe's or Amazon. We're getting away from our steels. Um, I think those are our last two. Perfect. And it's just for maintenance purposes. I, that was always my favorite blower, the Steel 700. Um, it's quiet, it's powerful, I, I like it, but I'm not out blowing anymore. And if the guys like the other ones, then they win <laughs> so that's there really comes down to and i'd rather just have you know 10 backup air filters for one type of blower than in one repair shop you know or we know how to fix the handles and doing that stuff right versus mixing and matching a bunch of stuff these are just these are the shelving so the big shelves that we have in the uh, shop unit and stuff like that we didn't use them all so and anyway, again didn't want to throw them away where do you put them so i just kind of hung them up and i, I kind of thought we'd be able to carabiner some things on them but we never did and so yeah it might need some wire shelving or i guess and but at least i didn't throw them away because here we are moving into a new shop and yeah, i've got my them. shelving back so. there you go there we go this is the uh last unit so we have the first unit all in the other side 
Um, and then we have the last unit, which is nice because this is where the special projects runs out of. Dump trailer and an F-250, it's kind of big. We're running out of space down there. <laughs> so yeah. they can come here in the morning, load up, and then they just drive down and then we'll do our morning meetings and stuff like that. But we've only had this one um, since January. So before this year, we only had two mowing crews. I couldn't run three out of one unit. So we took where the, where the LM1 is, we, that used to be this. Gotcha. Um, and then we took that one, when this one came available, we got this. And special projects for us, so we're a maintenance company. When you start first start off, it's like, what does that mean, right? right. Oh, we'll maintain your window. I don't know, it could be, <laughs> it could be anything. Uh, we, did, we did rock work, we never really got into hardscaping. We did some concrete pads, like little small stuff for, you know, just, we did everything. Now that we've grown, it's like, these are the services we offer, period. Oh, you want us to trim that limb? Sorry, that's outside of it. For us, what Special Projects does is the maintenance, the mowing crews don't have time to do. So the mulching, the hedge trimmings, the more thorough gardenings, right? The mowing crews, they're making money by cutting that grass that's growing every single week mm -hmm. for in Virginia, about 30 to 32 weeks a year. They don't have time to sit there and have those mowers sitting on the truck while they're spending time weeding. Right. They can do little bits, we charge a premium for it, and but we that's when we spend it in special projects which has a minimum so the minimum is pretty high but they're going to go in there they're going to do a more thorough weeding job so there this one crew is supporting the three mowing crews if that makes sense yeah we have this many wheelbarrows not because we use them that many that many right now but it's because of the winter in february when we start mulching right we need all hands on deck move and mulch yeah um so that's why i actually i think we had five and then we picked up three when we, when we uh acquired the other company we have our arborist ladder just hanging some, you know, corrugated pipe. I used to have more of it, but it's like we never, you know, we don't do drainage. Someone says they have a drainage problem. Oh, that's unfortunate. Here's a great company we recommend. Man, these guys were a game changer to me. Boy, are they expensive. Yeah, um, Arbor Sliders. That's why I haven't bought one yet. Arbor Sliders are expensive. <laughs> I've used one and I was like, oh, these are nice. Yeah, it's just, I'm not good with heights, personally. I just, you know, you get me on a six foot ladder, then your standard, whatever, um, step ladder thing and yeah. Okay, that's fine, but as soon as I start getting a little, I just, you know, you get wobbly and just <laughs> yeah. like, okay, what am I doing up here? Right. I can climb to the top of this guy and feel secure, which yeah. is weird. It's just a, it's like yeah. you're climbing a staircase. Yeah, the, that's that's why they're so expensive. Yeah. Tarp bags. We did a rock job. We did a river, river rock. Um, 2017, our first year in business. Um, and man did we underestimate that job it was the worst job we've ever done uh, i had a partner at the time we estimated five days it took us like 15 it was it took us a long time i still remember we estimated nine tons of river rock um which came in these super sacks a very steep driveway um so they were able to get the super sacks dropped off with the rocks well after the third delivery of underestimating how many we needed we ended up using a total of 27 wow tons. oh yeah it was a huge we we lost money like wow. literally didn't pay ourselves you know it was wow um it was it was a great learning experience yeah. that's what it comes down to yeah these things cost 20 bucks you pay for them when you get it delivered yeah and we didn't want to waste them we we're like oh this is good sack number 10 we're taking a razor blade just cutting through them oh. because we're you know three to five inch yeah. with no machine you're picking everyone up by hand oh man and uh there's no shovel that helps you yeah Every lawn crew has one. So a customer has like, you know, a little hedging job or they have, hey, I had a branch fall down. We'll chop that up, we'll charge them, throw them in a tarp bag. My operations manager, myself, or special projects will come by when they're on their way, grab it. It's all nice and clean, throw it in, you're done. Well, when we got this unit, I was like, oh, this is awesome, but it's not the same up top as it is uh, in our other units. Yeah, it's all concrete it's in all, some exactly. areas. Yeah. So again, the person that had this unit before was a landscaping company and they drilled into the walls and they had hooks in the walls and all that stuff. And I was like, I'm already on thin ice at this storage facility. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I got to figure out a different solution. So I went back to my shelves and I was like, my uh, operations manager and I put our heads together and discovered, let's put the shelves up and connect them. So these are three, three shelves wide. Uh, the Home Depot Husky brand, 90 by 90 inches or something but you can again there's two, it's two sets so there's four posts you know across and then we just you we didn't need all the shelving so we mm -hmm. just use one shelf up top and then we got two by sixes 
to attach to the shelving unit yep. so you don't attach to the wall. You don't touch the wall yeah. and bolts them in behind. So it's actually worked out better because now you've got extra storage up top. Yeah. And we didn't need all these shelving spots, but then, you know, we didn't need all this room. Yeah. So then um, we're able to keep another set of shelves here. Yeah. Which has, uh, you know, bulk storage. Yeah, so, you customize it however. So, you know, when you get to a storage, you're like, oh, well, my storage unit isn't set up that way, or I don't have those things hanging out. There's always something. We had on these I-beams up there, we would take a clamp and we, um, at one point, we clamped two by fours to it. We had it running out. Again, nothing was screwed in. There's a, well, there's a will, there's a way. Right. And I do believe in being organized. It just keeps the guys motivated and it just keeps you efficient. So here's the hand tools. Again, we have those uh, boards that are crossing over uh, the two by sixes, but then couldn't fit another shelf. Didn't want to waste the space. So we had the boards just go extend on past, cut it perfectly to end there. And so we could fit a few more, more, you know, and then that's our, whatever it's called. Uh, pull saw. Pull saw, thank yeah. you. And these little things, you know, we're just like, what do you do with it? Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. Keep that in. So that was, I think nice. I did that. Yeah. You always need this bucket. As much as I want to get rid of that bucket, it's like, you got all these odds and end things, the pickaxe, the post hole digger, things that we never use, but you need to have just in case you have that tough root ball or whatever. So I think we got the, um, the echo, and then the, again, back to the Husky Husky Barnes, Barnes, yeah. So, yeah, but then, you know, hand tools, try to, you know, keep everything taped up. Whenever we get a new one, it's hard for us to, every winter we go through, we clean everything. Wheelbarrows, hand tools, we take a power washer. We don't scrub in it with a toothbrush, but um, we do, we just clean everything and relabel. Re, you know, just put stickers, numbers, you know, just something on them every winter to just make sure you know, we're trying to stay on top of it. Yeah. It gives the guys something to do as well. In the middle here, we've got seed. So we've got, um, you know, a big issue with, with grass seed is germination. You want to keep the moisture out. Unfortunately, this isn't a, this is a controlled environment, but yeah, it's not perfect. So we have our shade, shade fescue, and then our tall fescue is over here. And then we do something a little different. Grass seed's expensive guys. So we buy this stuff, it's pellets, it's Pennington Slope Master basically a water absorption thing. We have these guys, um, we buy these containers for like 10 or 15 bucks. Once we use up whatever's inside them, then we refill them with, some of them have pellets, some of them have grass seed. So when you you scuff up, make a tire mark, mm -hmm. you just sprinkle this stuff down. Sprinkle a little grass seed and then a decent amount of this. Mm -hmm. And so the customer is like, oh wow, you're taking care of me. Pre-emergence, again, we have the little handhelds and then we fill them up once a year in the spring at Costco or BJ's or one of the wholesales, There's Huge deals. If you're buying it at Home Depot, it's not the right place. <laughs> Special project unit, pretty straightforward. Um, this one was different for us, especially, but I think it's good to show people how, you know, again, if you don't, if every storage unit's different, but how to do the shelving, you don't need to have all this. You could just have one shelf and a 10 by 10. This will, one, these things will fit and you can make it a little bit more organized, so. You gotta have these things when you're doing mulchings. Um, everyone's running the stairs, everyone's running to, um, Oh, um, yeah. little, uh, the, you know, curbs, when you have your trailer, there's mm -hmm. a little curb. We have two different sets. We got a longer one, which is for, you know, when you have like a stairway or something like that, a little like three stepper to get into the backyard or mm. wheelbarrow goes right over top of it. And then we have these guys which are really good for the curbs. Just put them together. Or if you have a double wheelbarrow, you can go like that, but hmm. just keep and, it. And you just built those yourselves, right? Sell these, I think for 10 bucks and then you get a piece of wood. You screw them on. Um, every lawn trailer has this as well for when you get to that curb and you can't pop the curb. Mm. All right, we're here checking out the trailer setup. Lots of growth. We got something familiar in the background here. 